All right, guys, Dreadnought's back today with a review on the Hasbro Transformers Masterpiece Starscream. I'm super excited because this is our first Transformers review that we're putting up on the channel. Uh, you can see this is a Toys R Us exclusive, and there's the little logo there. Just taking a closer look at the box and the packaging, you can see Masterpiece here, the Generations logo, Transformers down here, MP07, Starscream, and a couple nice pics of the figure. The Decepticon logo here that goes around to the side of the box. On the other side, you can see there's a nice bio in a few different languages. You can pause that if you'd like to read it. And then on the back of the box, you can see here we've got more of the same Transformers Masterpiece and three picks of the figure looking very tight. So let's crack this thing open and get a look and at it. Starscream out of the package and just looking completely awesome. I love how he turned out with the paint. Just looks really great. I do have to say right off the bat, he is a complete pain in the ass to transform at first. He does come in the standard clamshell uh, that you can see here. Two pieces of plastic that have to be separated. Uh, those of you that have seen Masterpieces before are familiar with this. But he comes in alt mode, so he comes as the jet. So you have to transform him into robot mode. Uh, and I'll just show you these instructions that come with him. And you can see here, it shows you how to transform him into a jet. So you can try and do this backwards. Uh, but Hasbro really needs to fix this. So with that being said, uh, I didn't film the transformation just because it would have taken an hour. Uh, because I had to figure out how to get him in. And I own Masterpieces, that's what's so sad. But this piece here does not want to slide down. I heard this about the... The last masterpiece that came out, the Sunspot, I've got the Acid Rain on the shelf and had no problems at all. But for some reason, the last few that came out are having problems with this. So it took me quite a while just to get these parts to match up. And that's where the real pain in the ass of transforming him is. So with that being said, let's get a closer look at him. And as we get a look at the accessories here, we'll take a look at the stand. Very nice. Uh, it's the standard masterpiece stand for the jet models. You know, nice purple paint app. It's got that metallic for the Decepticon logo. It's got that star screen emblazoned on the front. You know, it is plastic, but I do like it. It's nice. It has these clips in here for the flight stand. And you can see that here. And uh, I'll just plug that in like so. And then we'll take a look at the figure here. And you can see there's a little notch right here on the back. And there's a little hole right here in the stand. And that just plugs in. And it's sometimes kind of difficult uh, to plug that in there. But you know, it works well. And he stands up on the stand like that. Uh, and then I'll show you the plane mode on the stand a little later. But also comes with some nice rockets or missiles here, and you can see some nice silver paint apps there on those. And those just mount under the wing with the little clip there. And it comes with two sets. Uh, also, we've got a little pilot here. You know, nice detail and sculpt in that. It's all black. You know, but that's pretty cool. And then lastly, it comes with a little clip. And I can't remember what this clip goes on um, from my previous figure. So if you guys remember, or if any of you guys know, if you'll leave it in the comments, I would appreciate it. And now getting a closer look at the paint and sculpt work here on the figure. I think Hasbro did a good job overall with it. With Masterpiece figures, I always you know, look at it and, and wish for more detail in it or more paint apps. But I think what we got overall, especially in comparison to what we've seen in the past, is pretty standard. And it works and it's, it looks good overall. I like the silver they used for the face you know, and the red eyes, the black. Nice sculpt work on the head. You know, of course, these bend in for transformation. You know, some nice detail all around in every aspect. You know, I like the turbines here. Different shade of gray or silver used in there. You know, the canopy. I think it's a little darker on the Takara version of this figure. And by the way, I've looked at that figure as well. And other than just a few differences, they virtually are the same. You know, so if you're trying to choose between one or the other... You know, I think I would probably go with this one uh, just because it's cheaper. And really, you're not getting any extra detail that I saw, uh, not in paint and sculpt-wise. Um, but anyway, you know, going back to this figure, you know, very good choice of colors. The red just really pops. You know, I like this metallic blue on the hands. And I'll try to get a closer look in there on that. 
you know it's got more of a flat blue plastic for the actual hand part and then the gauntlet part is this metallic blue that just looks beautiful uh, nice silver paint apps up here on the laser you know and this is one of those things where you could always ask for more detail in there but what they have is simple and it works and I think it looks good and I think the blues work as well you know this doesn't really stand out from this and it gives it that classic look uh, you know to those that remember the cartoon and stuff you know great work here on the wing you know the red and white striping just really clean did a great job a little green paint app hit there at the end you know the Decepticon logo they did a great job painting it on with the silver and the purple and as we look down through the bottom of the figure some more of that metallic blue and if you look here on the feet they used kind of a, a grayish black and I like their choice there. Looks good. You know, and on this other wing on the back, you can see, you know, just, just very great shades of color they used. And all the paint apps are just very clean. You know, I really saw no errors in any of it. You know, if and the gray they used for the or, or white or however you want to call it, to me it's gray. You know, the plastic they used for the the base of the figure. There is some marbling, as you can see here, in that plastic, but I think it doesn't stand out, and in some cases, maybe it works, but I think it was a good choice overall. You know, it gives it almost a metallic look uh, to the plane, which I like. So, you know, overall, I'm really happy with the sculpt work and the paint apps on this figure. And as we muddle our way through articulation here, and this is a little difficult to show you, but the head moves up that much, you know, moves down pretty good amount it does turn and it does have a good amount of pivot so you can get it at an angle you know, and get him looking off to the side you know uh, you know everything's a movable part on a transformer but there's the arm rotation and you can see those clicks in there uh, so you know it's it will turn all the way around but you know I'm not gonna sit and try to turn it, it does have that upper arm rotation you know and it's got that joint that joins the elbow and I like how that looks with you know, kind of that piston look in there. Uh, the hands have uh, articulation uh, and rotation that you can rotate here. The fingers are articulated. I, I would love to have individual articulated fingers, you know, but this is better than what we've seen on some. So, you know, I'll take this. You know, each um, knuckle has a joint in there like that, and they do swivel out. So, you know, nice hand rotation there. Um, the waist does move, but when you move it, it does tend to pop out of, um, out of place. So I'm not going to really move that a whole lot. Like I said, this was one of the, the problem areas of transformation when transforming him into robot mode. So, you know, and that, that doesn't help matters. Uh, it does have upper leg rotation and the legs can move out, you know, a decent amount and can move back, uh, you know, a great amount actually further to the back. Um, it does have, you know, a great joint at the knee. Uh, you can get 90 degrees in there. And it is a little stiff. Um, you know, I don't know if you count this as a, a pivot, but it turns here on the foot. You know, it doesn't actually give you, you know, like an ankle pivot. But, you know, you can get some poses out of that with him standing. So, you know, overall, I like it. So what we'll do is transform him back into uh, alt mode and take another look at and it. And a few moments later, here is Starscream fully transformed in his alt mode and just looking really good. You can see I got the canopy open here and the landing gear down. Um, you know, this little black figure that came with him, he just slides right there in that seat and that canopy just snaps closed like that. So, you know, and that looks good. You know, here's a view of the top of him and you can see that great detail you know, in the paint and the sculpting, all that little line detail just looks really good. You know, the Decepticon logo is painted on. They just did a great job. They're nice and clean. Uh, so is the one up top here, you know, nice and clean there. You know, it just looks really, really great. You know, I just really can't say enough about it. I love that metallic sheen they used for the blue. You know, uh, the nose cone pops open like so. And I can't remember what this is for or what it's supposed to be for you know, if it's a magnet or whatever but you guys can leave it in the comments if you'd like um, but you know I know these move down and up as well the landing gear 
um, you have to flip open uh, this little piece here it's on a hinge and then that flips in to hide it which works really well and then these flip in as well and then you get that look of him flying in the air which looks really good now the lasers I had kept them on but you actually can use the um, the rockets here in that place of that they fit in the same little notch and I'll try to show you that but yeah they unplug here and these are on a ball so you can just remove them and then the jet I mean the rockets plug in um, like so and then you have that mode if you'd like it you can remove that it's Starscream so you know I like the lasers and I like the look of them on his wings so you know I would keep him in that mode um, let me show you the stand real quick and uh, you guys that have masterpiece figures probably are already aware of this but the stand does transform as well you know and that's our stand and we had it positioned upwards like so for the robot mode but it just turns down as that and slides in here at the end and it's ready to be displayed in jet mode oh also one other feature if you guys aren't aware these are movable back here and uh, also all the flaps you know are movable you know really nice detail I mean it looks really great from back there um, but anyway uh, with the stand it has a little clip here and you can see that notches in like so and these can be difficult sometimes in jet mode to get them to fit snugly so we'll try and get that going and you just really he's trying to untransform here you really have to line it up but once you line it up it fits snugly and he looks very cool just displayed like so so yeah there he is looking great I'm really liking that look it just really takes me back in the day to see Starscream in these paint colors and the look of that figure so we'll get him transformed again and do some comparisons. And here's Starscream compared to my Hasbro Transformers Masterpiece Acid Storm here on the right. And as you can see, these guys scale perfectly together since they share the same molds and all the same parts. I can't really fault Hasbro for this because I think, you know, the, it's a good mold overall. So, of course, they're going to reuse it. I think they do a great job on paint apps. And I think we get some things on each one that may be a little different. You can see some detail in the Acid Storm here that you may not see on Starscream and vice versa. So, you know, I think overall they look really great together. And here's Starscream compared to my Apollyon Megatron. And you can see these guys scale okay together height-wise. And Starscream's measuring in at right at 9 inches tall. But proportion-wise, you know, I'm not sure they really compare. And, of course, he's supposed to compare with a Masterpiece Optimus. And I guess these guys are a little bigger. But, you know, one of my general problems with Transformers collecting is the fact that I don't think they scale well together in comparison to, like, say, the cartoons and stuff. And, of course, the Transformers enthusiasts probably will tear me apart in the comments and maybe tell me I'm wrong. But I grew up on the cartoons, and I grew up collecting the old Transformers, and that was just one of the problems I had when I was collecting them back in the day, is I didn't think they really scaled well together. And I don't think Hasbro's completely fixed that now. And I know that's a logistics issue with having them transform and everything. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the way these two look together, though, and I definitely would be displaying them together. So in closing, I've got to say I really like this Starscream figure. I know for Masterpiece collectors, this is nothing new. Same body mold, different paint apps. Uh, but, you know, i got to say, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. My only real complaint with the figure is in the transformation of the chest part. Whatever Hasbro's done here recently on this one and the Sunspot figure, you know, I hope they fix that soon. Uh, and take care of that issue but otherwise you know i like the figure i think the paint apps were great on it i'm a fan of the classic transformers cartoon so getting this figure looking like this you know really brings back memories of sitting and watching that and gi joe back to back you know in the afternoons after school so i really uh you know i'm in love with this figure he's gonna look great on the shelf with my other transformers so you know i know this guy's hard to come by uh he was the last one and I stumbled upon him, and my Toys R Us kind of hid behind some others. Uh, you know, so if you guys are able to pick him up, I've got to rate him a buy. I think he's totally worth it, especially if you're a fan of the classics. You know, just a great look overall. It's not 
ideally perfectly in line with or or cartoon accurate, but it's close enough to work, and I think it just works great. And it's not a very expensive figure, you know, in comparison to some of the imports. All so. right, guys, there's my review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If so, please give me a big thumbs up. Also, I've got more content coming, so please subscribe. We are still trying to build an audience. Twitter, Facebook, and Toy Art links in the description below. And yes, Facebook is working now, and my videos should start uploading over there. So thank you guys for watching so much, and we will see you soon.